The Indiana Band Hoops tonight has a feel for the Big Ten or a big time entertaining game. IU is ready for Bryant on the Big Ten Network. Big Ten Network basketball presented by GMC Sierra. We welcome you to Assembly Hall, Bloomington, Indiana. The final tune-up before the Big Ten opener for the Hoosiers. They are set to host Bryant University out of the state of Rhode Island. Hi, everybody. John Laskowski and Craig Kishan aboard with you on the Big Ten Network tonight. And, John, for Christmas, Indiana had to carry around a lump of coal in their stocking. Not a good performance in their last game just before Christmas. How do they turn things around in this final tune-up before the Big Ten season? Well, they need to come ready to play. That first half down 15 to nothing. They did recover to get the lead, but then lost the game at the end. They really rely on a lot of freshmen, though, and that's part of the problem. Well, speaking of freshmen, Jordan Hulls now, locally out of Bloomington, is going to get his shot in the starting lineup tonight. He is, because he's been playing well off the bench. You see about five points a game. He rebounds well for his size, and he can really pass the ball around. Tom Green's looking for somebody who can defend on the point and pass that ball around to the right guy. All right, IU looks to get back to 500. If they can get the win here tonight before the Big Ten opener. First things first against Bryant next. We believe there is something to be said for delivering on promises and for restoring disruption as quickly as possible. Because it's not really about the stuff, it's about your family, your life, and theirs. Every policy from auto owners is sealed with a handshake from an independent agent that knows you and lives in your community. Welcome to a common sense approach to insurance. Whether it's home, auto, life, or business, the independent agent representing auto owners insurance will keep you and everything you value safe, sound, and secure. The all-new Big10Network.com, your home for hundreds of Big Ten video highlights. Sign up for text alerts and find out when your school will be featured on any Big Ten Network show. Interact with your favorite Big Ten Network personalities and shows on Twitter and Facebook. And download our podcasts to take the Big Ten Network with you wherever you go. The new Big10Network.com. Log on now. Big Ten Network basketball is presented by GMC. We are professional grade. And brought to you in part by State Farm. To us, nothing is more important than being there. And by the Schultes Insurance Agency and Insurance and Financial Services of Auburn, your local auto owner's insurance agents. Beautiful assembly hall here in the campus of the Indiana University here in Bloomington. It's Bryant University and Indiana. More on Bryant in a few moments, but first, just moments ago, Tom Green welcoming in the honorary team captain for tonight's game, and he gets to sit to my right tonight. John Laskowski, who played in the 1973, 74, and 75 seasons, a thunderous standing ovation, well deserves some unbelievably successful teams that Laz played on on the cover of SI. Look at number 31 go. That was a while ago. Look at those faces. My good friend Steve Green, a teammate of mine. And uh, yeah, I think that shot went in, Craig, as I recall, because I remember every shot I made. I, I think that one did go in. <laughs> but that's great. Coach Green honors uh, a friend of the program at every game as honorary captain. So uh, today, that's going to be me, my memento I'm going to be able to keep. And uh, I don't know, do you think that uh, if I put my uniform on, he might put me in the game? Do you think that's a possibility? I'm Is telling you what, anything's a possibility right now. <laughs> hey, you didn't get to play your freshman that's year. That's right, I got a year. And freshmen were ineligible back then. Let's take a look at the IU starting lineup. We mentioned Jordan Hulls now is going to start out running the point. Maurice Creek, Riddell Jones, Christian Watford, and Tom Pritchard back in that starting lineup for Tom Green. For Bryant University, about to join the Northeast Conference, Michael Crony, Chris Burrell, Adam Parch, Papa Lowe, and Barry Latham make up their starting lineup. They'll go with the three guards, and uh, this team missing two of its top scores and its leading scorer in Cecil Gresham, averaging 14 and a half points a game. He'll miss his fifth game of the season tonight as we get underway. For the this one batted out of bounds, and the Hoosiers 
Hoosiers will start out with the basketball out of bounds first here on the first possession of the game. Early seconds, what are you looking for, Les? A couple changes here in the lineup for Indiana. Three freshmen and two sophomores. Tom Pritchard back in the lineup, replacing uh, Eric Elston. And Jordan Holes right there with the ball number one, looking for Indiana to get off to a, obviously a better start than they did against Loyola, Maryland. Move the ball around, get some good shots. Defense is very important. Tom Crean at the shoot around today, as always, full of energy, but really stressing this to his players. That ball lost out of bounds. Hoosiers will keep it 16 on the shot clock. As you take a look at Tim O'Shea, the Bryant University head coach, 8-33, uh, second season in the Division I program. They actually go through the uh, four-year process. It's almost like a trial, if you will, but uh, they'll be accepted into the Northeast Conference and uh, be eligible for postseason of 2013. Very successful coach at uh, Ohio University, 120-95 record there in the MAC, and uh, has a home in Rhode Island. His wife is from the East, and decided to take this job at Bryant and get closer to home, East Coast. What a job to basically start a basketball program at the Division One level. the way and Bryant. So the turnover there, Indiana gets the ball back. And that's where these teams are very similar. You know, they've both been at their universities two years now, Tom Green and Tim O'Shea, and they're basically starting from scratch, if you will, as they try to develop these programs. Indiana with all new players and Tim O'Shea's Bryant team moving into Division One. Bob down low, another foul, and this is an issue that Bryant has gone through through their first 12 games, and that's getting into foul trouble, sending the opponent to the free throw line. Indiana wants to get the ball inside, and Pritchard is the biggest, strongest guy Indiana uses, and there you see he gets fouled inside. Indiana, Tom Crean felt Indiana didn't push the ball inside enough against Loyola at the start of the ball game, and you can see the Indiana team really concentrating on getting the ball inside, drive it in the lane, dump passes off, and get double team. There's Tom Crean. Second year at Indiana, 11 and 31 record. Of course, he wants those numbers to improve, but it's going to take some time, as you mentioned, Laz. Completely different team than a year ago. Far more competitive players on the court, but mostly young. And we'll talk about that later in our telecast, too. The youth of this Indiana team compared to some others that they'll be competing with starting on Thursday with Big Ten play over. Not a start for fireworks, but it is 1-0. And Indiana has the ball back. Both these teams like to fast break, as opposed to set up their half-court offense. Indiana, though, got that ball kicked away and retained possession. Now. Rodford has his goal off his foot and then deflect off a Bryant player, so Hoosiers keep it. Holes to inbound. Jones from the corner. Can't get it to go. Big offensive set, though by Pritchard, and lost out of bounds, and Bryant will get the ball back. The Bryant University Bulldogs. Saw Tom Crean, he said, shoot that ball. Nice rebound by Pritchard, don't dribble it, just go right up. Challenge low to see if he can block that shot, and look at Tom Crean on the bench, get them ready to go. Full court pressure by Indiana. They like to do this, don't they? They like to mix up the defense. Bryant is a fast uh, pace team as well. They don't like to set up in the half court. Indiana, two tree zone, trying to force the outside shot, but that's how you beat that zone, get that ball in the uh, free throw line area. A lot of hands on the ball, a lot of deflection, shot clock down to eight. Latham has to put one up, misses, and the shot clock will go off, the ball never hit the rim. Steve Wilmer making that call. Steve Wilmer, J.D. Collins, and Bob Donato are officiating crew. And they hit the backboard, but never hit the rim. And the players have to be aware. They have to watch that shot clock. It doesn't reset. That means they're going to get the shot right away. So they would have had time to get a quick shot, but not realizing the shot clock didn't reset. It's a turnover. Burrell, a little bit of pressure on holes. Well, he's one of the nation's top point guards in high school. Right down the street in Bloomington. 
This one off the window, good for Christian Watford in the first field goal of the game for the Hoosiers. Yeah, look for Watford to have a big game, six foot nine, 220. Nobody on the Bryant team with uh, as much athleticism as Watford, and then you saw a drive right down the middle, finishes off with the layer. And last, they are missing Cecil Gresham, their leading scorer, 14 and a half points a game. Also, their leading rebounder, senior captain, for a team that's 0 and 12, he's now missed five games. What are they missing without him? Well, they they lose the experience. They, this is a very young team that Tim O'Shea is going to have to play. Two sophomores, six freshmen, and so guys are having to play roles they're not used to, and they've lost uh, you know every game this year so far. And so he knows it's a rebuilding uh, program though, and there's Gresham on the bench there in the middle right there. He did do kind of the shoot around, but walked through gingerly and they didn't expect him to play, and he will not play in tonight's game. He's had some shoulder and knee issues, the knee bothering him tonight. Holes from downtown, can't get it to go. Ryan tries to keep it alive, ball kicked, and turned over again, quickly down court. The jam is missed, but a foul coming up. Nick Ponce took it in for Bryant. And this one's going to be on Pritchard. Indiana's just not taking good care of the ball. 23 turnovers in the defeat to Loyola in the previous game. 14 of those in the first half. Looked like they had a steal there at the other end of the floor. But instead of grabbing the ball, tried to flip it. And uh, Bryant makes the steal going the other way for an easy fast break. So Nick Ponce, the uh, senior center out of New Bedford, Massachusetts. There's that uh, Indiana bench. Tuesday against Loyola, just nine assists, 23 turnovers. That just uh, does not spell a victory. Here's what the opposing team has to shoot into. And, you know, there's a lot of the students gone on, on either end for the Christmas break, but the signs are still alive. Absolutely. You obviously, you want to concentrate on the rim. Forget about the signs. You can look at those later. <laughs> <laughs> nice looking shot off the backboard for Christian Watford. So he's got four. If you play off Watford, then he can just take the jump shot. You play him close, then he uses drive to get around you. So that's why he'll be a difficult matchup for Five two advantage right now for Indiana. Opening moments of our contest. Follow. Won't go. Watford gets the rebound, kicks it out to Holmes. He looks to push ahead. Loose ball. Hoosiers get it back. And a shot is good for Jones. And a 7 2 advantage now for Indiana. Indiana trying to make some passes a little too far, and Bryant's got their hands in to deflect some. Lucky break there that Verdell Jones came up with it. And a travel. Interesting story there on Michael Crony, number three, 6'2", 190, played high school ball, came to Bryant just as a student, and his sophomore year was playing in intramural league. And Tim O'Shea heard about this guy tearing up the intramural league, went to see him play and said, son, why don't you come out to play for the varsity? And he did. And now he's on the team and starting in tonight's ball game. Quite a story for Michael Crony, averaging three and a half points a game, playing about 16 minutes a game. And from the intramural team right to the varsity. Those are good stories. And, and his first game starting, he had a double dump. Hoosiers with the ball back. Hulls works it down low to Elston, who's in the game. Turnaround shot off the glass, waste no time to get going. 9 2 Indiana. Crony at 6 2, 190 is the power forward for this Bryant team. And so he's drawing uh, Derek Elston as his assignment. Elston just took it up on strong. And a foul coming up as Maurice Creek commits the foul. Number two on him. And we go to action now. Elston comes right in the game against Indiana, 9-2 advantage. Excuse me, is this the returns line? Yeah. Didn't get the 3G coverage you wanted this season? There's a map for that. To get five times more 3G coverage than AT&T, hurry into the Verizon Wireless Go Red Save Green event, where you can get 50% off select 3G phones like the Moto Rival, LG 8360, or the Samsung Omnia for just $24.99. Verizon Wireless. New Year's Day, the Big Ten Network kicks off the best pre- and post-game bowl coverage at 10 a.m. Eastern as Dave Howard and Coach get you ready for Northwestern Auburn and Penn State LSU. Then at 4 Eastern, Ohio State, Oregon, we break down the granddaddy of them all, and Rick Pizzo and Glenn Mason have the latest from Pasadena. 
And when it's over, the Big Ten Bowl postgame special wraps up the action. Big Ten Bowl coverage, New Year's Day, only on the Big Ten Network. Fuel TV's First Hand returns with an all-new season. Go beyond the ride and inside the lives of the biggest names in action sports. Join us each week as we circle the globe with another outstanding pro living the dream. Watch an all-new season of First Hand, this week only on Fuel TV. Tim O'Shea, second year coach at Bryant. His team is down nine to two, and you say, where's Bryant University? Well, it's in Smithfield, Rhode Island, about 15 minutes outside of Providence. They'll join the Northeast Conference, notable alum. How about Earl Silas Tupper, founder of Tupperware? In fact, donated 220 acres on the site for the campus. He liked the school so much, so as uh, money was put to good use in helping to educate all the Bryant students. Just moved to Division I a couple of years ago and have to go through that four-year race period, if you will, to uh, qualify for conference play and then for postseason. Another turnover, that's number five on Tim O'Shea's team. And Tim O'Shea talked to me at the shoot-around. It takes eight years now. He got in when it was four, but now it's an eight-year uh, transition period, so uh, he's very happy to get in when they do. We saw Indiana after a kind of a slow start, hitting the last three shots from the floor. This one misses, but look at the second chance opportunity as Indiana keeps it live. Elston and a fresh clock. Bryant is uh, active defensively. Pritchard keeps it alive, but this shot is blocked away. How about Jeremiah Rivers, a new look after Christmas? He had a little longer hair when we saw him the last time at Loyola, Maryland. He can still play, though. So he's in the game. Five assists a contest, one of the Big Ten leaders, but he starts from the bench in this contest. And another three from the corner for Derek Alston. He's got five off the bench. That's the best way to get a three-point shot. Take the ball inside first and then pass it back outside. Elston ready to shoot when that ball came to him. Indiana starting to put it together. A 10-point lead early on here in the first half. We talked a little bit about where Bryant is from and how they are trying to establish themselves in Division I. They have not won yet this season, 0-12. Of hands though, another turnover. That's number four for the Hoosiers. We've seen a total of nine turnovers in this game, and Bryant answers with the three on the other end. Eric Smith makes it a 12-5 game. That's a fast break there. They didn't get the layup, but they took the first good shot they could find before Indiana set their defense. Rivers left a Bryant player open. Can't do that when they have the ball. Stay with them. Try to put your hand up on that shot. Three-point threat pretty high for Bryant. Nearly 40% of contest. Now Indiana forced to work in a half court set. Holes three pointer answers on the other end. Had a little more time on that one. He's a good three point shooter. And now Indiana back into that three quarter court zone press. Active hands, Rivers, the steal. And a foul before the shot coming up on Bryant University. So Jones sets inbound. Let's watch Jordan Holes ready to shoot, steps right into it. When you catch that ball low in position and step right into the shot, it really helps your momentum as you go toward the basket. He's going to take a little break now with Pritchard, Indiana, though, a good start. Good hand for the local product, Jordan Holes. Last foul on Michael Crony, the uh, walk-on that Laz was talking about. Foul number two on him. And we'll see if we get a change of possession or a timeout. And a timeout's going to be called by Bryant. So Kondrachev called the timeout. 
Starting this January, go behind the scenes with all 11 men's basketball programs and get access like never before for one of the most competitive seasons ever on the journey. Big Ten Basketball 2010, beginning January 10th at 9 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. Looking forward to that extra coverage of Big Ten Basketball. Getting in behind the scenes. Programming continues to expand in a real positive fashion to cover this com conference. 15-5, Bryant in non-conference play here at Assembly Hall. 0-12 record, as I mentioned. They're only scoring 53 points a game. That's the lowest in the nation. And the Sagarin ratings are two from the bottom. Tim O'Shea understands that. He's not trying to build those numbers in a hurry. He's trying to establish a program. One of the few games like this in the course of the year get these chance of kids, these kids a chance to play at, at a place like Indiana. It's going to be a great memory for them. It was the outcome of the ball game. They got to play at Assembly Hall. And you could tell when they came in this morning, couldn't you? I did. They, uh, they enjoyed being here. They had a nice uh, free ruling, uh, if you will, shoot around. And then with the uh, first player to make a half-court shot, ends the uh, ends the practice. So it uh, took four or five tries, somebody hit one, and they left. So there can be some good memories here for Bryant. Of course, uh, assistant coach Tim Buckley for Indiana, good friend of Tim O'Shea's, and that's how this game got set up. Tim Buckley coached in the map. Nice down low. Got partially blocked down there by Watford. He'll lead the break this time. And ahead to Jones in the lane. That's a great play by Watford. He could have given that ball up to Verdell, but he decided to get the middle with a player on each side. It was a three-on-two break. And a nice job by Watford getting to the open man. Three ball in the corner misses, and ball lost out of bounds as Jordan can't corral that ball and bring it in. That's Watford now. He sees he's got two players, one on the right, one on the left. Nice throwing that pass a little early, but Verdell makes a great play. On the left side, used his right hand, got that to go. That's part of the difference, though, if you look at this Hoosier team from a year ago, the athleticism, as you see the, the struggles Bryant has on the floor. Right. One for eight. Another three ball. It won't go this time for Dumas, but the putback is right there. Now those are the kind of plays Watford is going to be able to make in tonight's game. Third time now we've seen him take control of that ball and score with it. 19-5, Indiana. Shot deflected away again. Capobianco got his hand on that one. The kick out, drive inside. And the pass and the block again. Right, active defensively, this time Papalo on the block. That's what he does very well. Block shots, uh, almost three blocks per game. 6'9", 215 from Senegal. Papalo, I love the name, Papalo. About the wingspan for Papa. <laughs> telling you what, that's a major league wingspan right there. I asked him what he thought of being in America today, and he said it's cold. <laughs> and he gets a nice feed down low in the paint. Nice job right there as he gets two points. to seven Hoosiers out in front here in the first half. And a trap. Dumas shuffled that pivot foot. Six turnovers by the Hoosiers here in the first half. So here we are in the fourth quarter. No time left and the touchdown is under review. Hey guys, what do you think? We're not ready to go yet. Is there any way you can send this thing into overtime? Yeah. No problem. I don't know what he was looking at, but we're going into overtime. Buffalo Wild Wings, you have to be here. This could finally end it. Unbelievable. Every week, relive the drama on the Big Ten's greatest game. It's all here. The legendary star. The incredible slams. The amazing performances. And the unforgettable finishes. Catch all the great action only on the Big Ten Network. I don't know why anyone would want me dead. Guess we'll find out, won't we? 
There's no one in the world better qualified in personal security and threat assessment. I work with a cover. Let you appear vulnerable so the threat reveals itself and then eliminate the threat. What are you afraid of? Dying? It's not gonna happen. Come on, this will be fun. Human Target, a new series coming next month on Fox. Tom Green likes the scoreboard. It's 19-7 Indiana. The turnover ratio, though, getting high. Six turnovers, Laz. What do you see? Right, not a lot of pressure here. Boom, ball around the zone. Can't go right, and Devin Dumas just creates a really unforced error, a traveling call. As he fakes right, went left. But very difficult to drive from the outside against that zone. And again tonight, six turnovers and three assists. We saw that was the problem with Loyola, Maryland. A lot more turnovers than assists. Not, never a good sign. And they can't get away with that once the Big Ten starts on Thursday. Not even close, can they? No, not at all. We've seen a lot of hustle play, a lot of bodies on the floor. Bryant will maintain possession here. Tom Crean wants, what, 20 assists and 20 layups? 20 That's assists, a goal, isn't it? 20 layups. We talked to the team to shoot around today. And those are big numbers to hit. But he doesn't want 20 turnovers. But not 20 tournaments. Ball loose, shot clock under 10. Jumper won't go, Indiana comes out of there with the basketball. Hulls pushes ahead. Corner shot won't go. And again, Indiana controls the board. And this time, Rockford puts it home. He's having a nice night. Eight points so far in the first half. More pressure, the steal, and the finish. Good play by Jordan Hulls right there. Comes up with that steal, but the possession before, Indiana didn't dribble the ball a lot, a lot of passing. And a good shot off the window for Barry Lowe. 3-9, Indiana. So moving the ball against the zone with the pass is a good way to do it. You want to reverse that ball. You want to get that zone moving back and forth so you can find that open. You see Pritchard pointing toward his side of the court. So Indiana's been working on that. Here's a set play. Worked on that at the shoot-around. Just a little too high on the pass for that dunk. Three ball on the second chance. Won't go for Dumas. So Bryant gets it back. And the blocking foul coming up. On holes. It'll be his first. 8.52 to go in the first half. Losers up big, 23 to 9. Rivers goes out for Indiana. Host of replacements coming in for both sides. Boosters trying to even up their record. They came into this contest at five and six. Lost a game, Tom Green really was hoping they'd win, trailing big as John Laskowski pointed out in our open against Loyola, Maryland. A 20 point comeback to take the lead late in the game, but did not hold off Loyola. Good defense by Indiana, man to man. You need to stay in front of your man. Don't let him drive to the hoop. That's a nice move right there by Latham. He missed the shot. A good alter for Watford. Boosters have that ball back. Long three won't go. Here comes Brian down the run again. It's Jordan. Oh! Oh! Try to take a deep laz, but boy, to no avail. But the size does matter in this ball game, doesn't it? Raphael Jordan, 6-1, number 10, try to take that ball inside. And the big guys are playing it smart. Just put your hand straight up. Don't try to block the shot, because that makes it a very difficult shot to make. And Raphael couldn't make that shot, but Indiana did not come up with the possession. Austin back in for Christian Watford, who's having himself a nice first half. Renewer also comes in for Indiana. Pritchard gets a blow. A nice hand for, from the crowd for Pritchard as he leaves. Good hustle out there. Shot 
weakness by Burrell. And deflected out of bounds. Indiana will keep it. 7.54 to go here in the first half. Jordan Holes gets the start. He's been productive, especially on the defensive end. Nice play here, Indiana up big. We believe there is something to be said for delivering on promises and for restoring disruption as quickly as possible. Because it's not really about the stuff, it's about your family, your life, and theirs. Every policy from Auto Owners is sealed with a handshake from an independent agent that knows you and lives in your community. Welcome to a common sense approach to insurance. Whether it's home, auto, life, or business, the independent agent representing Auto Owners Insurance will keep you and everything you value safe, sound, and secure. The all-new Big Ten Network.com, your home for hundreds of Big Ten video highlights. Sign up for text alerts and find out when your school will be featured on any Big Ten Network show. Interact with your favorite Big Ten Network personalities and shows on Twitter and Facebook. And download our podcasts to take the Big Ten Network with you wherever you go. The new Big Ten Network.com. Log on now. When you dream, do you dream in black and white, color, or do you dream in speed? Then get ready for the Speed Dream Ride. Watch marathon weekends of our best shows and enter to win a five-day star-studded, super-fueled, all-vehicle experience. A dream ride only speed can deliver. Hey, buddy. Watch your speed. The Speed Dream Ride. Enter at speeddreamride.com. Take me for a dream ride. Indiana huddling up, 23-9 lead over Bryan. They're doing it on defense, too, in the backfield. Right, Jordan holds in position to make deflections, not play defense. Watch his hands here, stop right there. See how he's got his hand straight out. Instead of down low here, it's straight out to deflect that ball. And as the ball comes through, he, he gets the deflection, comes up with a steal. Watch this pass, though, no look. He knew Watford was there. He just had to get up high enough over the defense. He got him an easy layup. So you've got your hands down low and a defense is with the palms up. You're just trying to play defense. If you've got your hands extended at your waist, you're in for deflection trying to come up with the ball. And Tom Cree made that point for the team today to shoot around. Three-pointer by Verdell Jones. He has 7-26-9 the lead. And the answer on the other end for Eric Smith of Bryant. That defensive breakdown gave up the baseline drive and can't do that. Foul coming up on Kondrachev. 26-11 our score. Sunday nights get caught up on hoops with this week in Big Ten basketball. Dave Revson, Jim Jackson, and Dan Dawkins recap the highlights from the week's action and offer the first look at the marquee matchups coming up on the schedule. This week in the Big Ten basketball presented by Barbasol. Premieres Sunday at 9 Eastern only on the Big Ten Network. And another three ball for Indiana Maurice Creek. Gets into the scoring column with his first field goal. Well, Maurice Creek, a great outside shooter, but needs to look for a shot more. They just don't, they just don't always come to you. you got to work for them, find that opening. And a 10-second violation. Indiana's defense becoming even more active. Tim O'Shea, the head coach. Easy to watch that one. 24 seconds left on the shot clock on that... Uh, Play was stopped, which meant it take more than 10 seconds to get the ball across the line. Hoosiers have the ball back. Biggest lead of the game at 29-11 right now. Just over seven minutes to go. First half. Holes. Three ball. He's got six. Quickly becoming a crowd favorite. They get t-shirts every time somebody makes a three-pointer, and they're uh, all looking for that t-shirt. But Holes is ready to shoot, and that's uh, very important for a freshman. Watch him now. He's down low when the ball comes. 
and it doesn't take long at all to get that shot away as the defense is going to recover, which they will very quickly. He's ready to go, and then he sets up for that defensive push. There's Holes, last foul on Derek Elston, his first. Look at the hands there by Indiana. See, they're all straight across. That's how you get deflections, and that's hard to do because it's not a natural stance. It's easy to keep the, the hands down by your knees, but you can't deflect any balls like that. Nice job by all five Indiana players in there, keeping those hands at their ex arms extended to deflect passes. Shot clock down to 10. Ball lost. Indiana coming down on the break. Popolo didn't know that one was coming. But he knew that one was coming on the block, and he may get called for the foul. Nope, that one just lost out of bounds, so the Hoosiers will get it back. That's Watson now. Opening for Verdell. He takes it all the way in. And that ball blocked, and then Bryant gets the ball. I'm not sure how. Oh, goaltending was called. Oh, goaltending, okay. Did not see that call until just now. Goaltending. Goaltending call, count the basket, and give the ball to Ryan. It was close. There's no doubt about that. 34-11 after the goaltend. Another deflection. And again, defensively, the knee the Indiana keeps track of deflections. They won about 40 a game to deflect the ball, not that they're going to come up with steals every time, but 40 deflections. And Tom Crean mentioned to the team against Bryant, he wanted to see 50. If it was possible, it's 50 deflections. There may have been another one there on the missed shot. Let's see if they can convert here. Open look won't go, trying to keep it alive. And Tony does. Now Indiana's got it. And a foul on the backcourt. So that'll go on Brian's Eric Smith, his first. Now, if you're honorary captain, you talked about 40 or 50 deflections. Don't you have to count those up? Who's responsible for keeping track of the deflections? Well, it's not a stat that uh, Terry Moore here at our table keeps. It's not a stat they keep in the truck. It's obviously a stat that's kept on the bench. And Tom Crean has, uh, has taught the guys, here's what a deflection is. So it's kind of an inside story, if you will. We don't really get to, I, I get to see the chart at the end of a game and tell us how many they got. But it'd be very difficult to keep track of all of them as you go. But obviously these kids are very aware of it because that's something that Tom Crean stresses. That is an inside story though and a good one. It's one of the many things that goes on for a team that didn't, doesn't have to be public stats, but very important it's to a, keep all of the guys active. It's a lot more than making shots and, and how many turnovers. I mean, there's a lot more in the game. And Tom Crean is a great student of the game. The, the people he watches, he watches football, he watches football tapes and shows that to the team. And it's about the full package of how to be a winning program. We talked today about tradition and culture and the foundation. The foundation and tradition are here at Indiana. But the culture is not because, because there's so many new players. He's got to ma match the culture to the foundation. And that's the hard process. But once it gets there, then you're in the lines to win Big Ten championships and national championships. Shot clock was down to four. Desperation shot won't go. Rivers on the run. Shot from just inside the lane won't go. Rebound ripped down and a foul coming up on Indiana. This one's going to be on Joe. Tijon Joe picked that one up. He didn't agree with that call. Let's see what happens. Good shot by Watford just didn't go. And it looked like a hand in there. You know, when you're 7 feet, 250 pounds, it may not be a, a decisive blow to you, but it, it hurts if you're not as big. And that's exactly what happened. They knocked the Bryant player down. Tijon picked up that foul. But Indiana much more aggressive today. Uh, they're, they're playing defense. They're coming up with steals. They're, they're creating turnovers. It leads to fast breaks on the other end. That's the kind of style Tom Green wants to see. So Michael Crony will go to the free throw line. 4.36 to go in the first half. Crony a 69% free throw shooter. Misses, Indiana gets the rebound. Push ahead, and a turnover on the interception. Straight down and a block. Make it two, or a foul coming up, however. 
A lot of bodies on that hardwood here in the first half. Eric Smith coming right at you, goes up strong. Good block, Rivers came over and then stumbled into the first row. And then the foul after the shot. No. Brian just one field goal in the last five minutes and 45 seconds. So I mentioned they just averaged 53 points a game. They've averaged 45 points a game in their last two games. They just have trouble scoring in the half court offense. But Tim O'Shea, when he took the job at Bryant, got an eight year contract. So he is uh, comfortable with the ability to take the time to build the program that, that he wants to build, bring the players in, and see if he can make this happen. Tony back to the free throw line. Connects on that throw. And then he will go out. Barry Latham in for him. Daniel Moore also into Indiana's lineup as Rivers brings the ball up. You mentioned the, the videos that sometimes Tom Crean likes to present to his team. He showed him a Steve Nash video, not just for the guards, but for the whole team, showing some spacing. Right, spacing and being aware when that point guard's bringing that ball down, and you sometimes don't know how he's gonna make that pass to you. You gotta be ready for that pass. He'll figure out a way to get it for a nice drive by Jeremiah Rivers there. He's under control that time and finishes with the layup. His first field goal of the game. Your turnover. Cross court pass. Shot won't go for Jordan. Here comes Rivers. Indiana wants to run. Nice drop back. Pritchard on the deflection. Indiana's going to keep it. Three ball won't go for Creek. And here comes Bryant University. Trying to make some hay here on the road, down 36-12, late first half. Pretty tough Indiana defense. They have worked against, they have been aggressive, and it really limited Bryant. Deflecting the ball, blocking shots, coming up with key rebounds. Oh, dribbling right there, I think. Indiana wants to see that pass, move that ball. Where do you think Tom Crean is, uh, Laz, with, with Rivers right now? Well, I think he likes his aggressiveness. He likes the way, he's, the way he plays. He doesn't like the number of turnovers that he's had in recent ball games. A good play by Indiana right there, and now a timeout. Richard finishes on the other end, and Rivers trying to make things happen with under three minutes to go here in the first half. And stay tuned for the State Farm Halftime Report. Rick Pizzo and Kendall Gill standing by highlights and analysis, preview of the uh, basketball post-game show as well. Conference play on the way. Starts tomorrow, Purdue and Iowa. Christian Wofford has been active here in the first half offensively. Now difficult to guard. He can drive to his right, as you saw there. You play off him. He's got a nice touch off the glass. You see him coming up with a board there. No dribble. Go back up with it strong. So this is kind of game where Wofford's uh, uh, just natural ability takes over. Ten points, five of eight, six rebounds. Just a great stat line for that first half. And he's uh, rested a couple times, not in the lineup now but pretty good numbers for the freshman. 6'9", true freshman out of Birmingham, Alabama. 38-12 our score. And then back to zone now, 2-3. The man-to-man -man was working well. I think Tom Crean just likes to switch it up. Too easy, that pass on the block. Too, too easy to get there, and then you, it's very difficult to guard 6'8 guys when they get the ball on the block. From Drakjev on the nice shot along the baseline, 38-14. Under two minutes to go, first half. Indiana 
reset it. Under 15 on the shot clock. Rivers nearly lost that one. This one blocked by Latham. Four on the shot clock. And a whistle coming up, a foul on Bryant on the push with four seconds left on the shot clock. So 1.27 to go in the first half. We're going to step aside here at Assembly Hall. Hey, 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 hey. Your map's blocking the game. Oh, sorry. I'm just checking the other scores. Is my map in the way? No, no. You're good. <laughs> to get five times more 3G coverage than AT&T, come to Verizon Wireless, where you'll find smartphones under $100, like the BlackBerry Tour, Droid Eris with Google by HTC, or the new BlackBerry Curve for just $79.99. Verizon Wireless. Big Ten Super Wednesdays, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. First, the high-octane Spartans look to show why they're one of the nation's best when they battle Texas Arlington. Then, it's an early conference showdown in Champaign as the gritty Wildcats square off with the rival Illini. And it all starts with the tip-off show. Big Ten Super Wednesdays, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Texas Arlington, Michigan State, Northwestern Illinois. Coverage starts at 6.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. With the holiday lights lightening up uh, Bloomington. Looking pretty here just after Christmas, 38-14. Hoosiers lead Bryant. Our State Farm halftime report moments away. Rick Pizzo, Kendall Gill. Highlights and analysis of tonight's action, plus a look ahead to the Big Ten. Play starts tomorrow. Hoosiers set to host Michigan on Thursday afternoon right here. Lots to talk about. Also during our telecast, John Leskowski and I will look at some of the surprises in the Big Ten, some of the key storylines. Northwestern ranked. Yes, I said that, Northwestern ranked. First time in 40 years. Top 25. Great start to the Wildcats season. And another long-range wave for Dumas. Yeah, passing the ball around, not a lot of dribbling. And give what the defense takes you, a nice three-point shot. Steel Rivers, and he puts it away. He's got four, 43, 14. Active legs, kicked out of bounds. One more look at that turnover, Steel and Hoop. All right, Rivers sees it coming, not the place for the bounce pass. It takes too long for the bounce pass to get to your teammate, and Rivers steps right in, two dribbles. He's all the way to the basket. Tom Crean's been able to shuffle players in and out of that lineup. And that's a style he likes to play. I mean, he'd love to go 9, 10, 11 players uh, when he can. I know Kansas is using a lot of players this year, and they're, of course, ranked number one. So you got kids that can play. You want to play them. He's gone 12 deep in the first half already. One thing you talked about today with us, Craig, is about the players' roles. They need to know the role that they play. I mean, all stars in high school, but if they get to college, there's a different role they have to take up. And each year, yet, that role could change some, depending on the makeup of the team. And this team's still trying to decide what role each player has and, and how that role helps them become a better team. So it's not about how many points you get. It's about whether you win or lose the game. So if you have to score fewer points for your team to be a better in the win and loss column, that's the kind of players Tom Green's looking for. And a good second chance opportunity and put home for Kondratovic. That makes it a 43-17 score. Indiana will hold it for the final shot of the first half. Two on the shot clock. And Indiana closes out the scoring in the first half. Devin Dumas helps give the Hoosiers a 45-17 lead over Bryant University here at the break from Assembly Hall. Let's send it now to our Chicago studio.
And welcome into the State Farm Halftime Report. Alongside Kendall Gill, I'm Rick Pizzo. Indiana up 45-17 to 17 at the half. IU tying a season high for most points in the first half, setting season high for the largest margin and the fewest points allowed. Kendall, it has not been a thing of beauty. It hasn't yeah. been a pretty game, but Indiana and Tom Crean have to be happy with the score right now. Yeah, are your eyes hurting yet? Because yeah. really, Brian is playing terrible basketball right now, and it's to Indiana's favor. What Indiana has to do is continue to play good offense and not turn the basketball over. Last game against Loyola, Maryland, they turned the ball over 23 times. As you can see here, Christian Walford with nice offense going straight to the bucket. They recognize it, get them the ball in the post as well. Hey, Indiana shooting a three, two. You got Derek Elston shooting a three, and also Jordan Hole. So Indiana in control of 45 to 17. As we mentioned, those 17 points by Bryant, the fewest allowed by Indiana all year long as the Bulldogs really struggling just their third year in Division I basketball. We now know why they are ranked <laughs> 343rd out of 347 1A teams in the RPI. More on this game coming up in a bit. But first, Kendall, let's turn our attention to the start of conference play, which comes away on Tuesday night. A pair of games on the Tuesday schedule. Purdue and Iowa, a game you can see right here on the Big Ten network. That one tips at 7 o'clock. Penn State then travels to Minnesota for the nightcap. Let's focus on the first game. First, Kendall, Purdue and Iowa. On paper, it appears a giant mismatch. Do you think it will turn out to be that way? Yeah, I think it will be. You got Robbie Hummel, Juwan Johnson, Etwan uh, Moore playing absolutely great basketball. Now, Iowa had to suspend their second leading scorer and, um, uh, Anthony, An Tucker. Anthony Tucker. Anthony Tucker being out. That is going to cause Iowa a lot of problems. So I don't see them really giving Purdue much of a problem. In the nightcap, it's Penn State and Minnesota. Penn State certainly struggling after their run through the NIT last year, and they've had all sorts of road trouble under Ed DeCellis. 8-42 and 42 all time. Minnesota, meanwhile, has scoring at a major clip, about 93 points a game in their last five. Do the Gophers have the edge here? I think so. Tubby Smith has really found the lineup that he likes. You know Tubby likes to tinker with his lineup a little bit, but now they've got Blake Hoffarber in there for three-point shooting. you, you got Ralph Sampson III in there, Colton Iverson. They're running the, the center position in tandem, but they're doing a very good job. I don't think Taylor Battle, who is a one-man team, can really uh, come in and upset the Minnesota Gophers. And I know most of the players very excited about the start of conference play. I know you are as well yes, as we're I talking am. about it in the green room, <laughs> especially watching this game. This one gets you excited for the start of conference play when there's no more of these non-conference matchups against teams that, to be truthful, we don't know very much about. Right. We know this much. Indiana in control. Jordan holds for three. Hoosiers lead it by 28. More from the State Farm Halftime report after the break. This January, the Big Ten Network offers the most extensive look inside Big Ten basketball ever. Friday's Big Ten Hoops on campus brings you everything happening on location in preparation for the big game. Sundays, go behind the scenes for one of the most competitive seasons ever on the journey. Big Ten Basketball 2010. And Get a recap of all the hoops highlights on This Week in Big Ten Basketball, presented by Barbasol. It all begins this January, only on the Big Ten Network. There is a constant battle escalating right on our borders. On January 10th, Nat Geo puts a face to the war, shadowing the men and women. Everybody here puts a piece of themselves out. On the front lines against smuggling, terrorism, and illegal immigration. This is good stuff. It's what we like to do. It's a never-ending fight. There's a lot of danger over here. To protect a 2,000-mile-long line in the sand. Border Wars Special Series premiere, Sunday, January 10th at 9 on National Geographic. You're watching the Big Ten Network. Rick Pizzo, Kendall Gill back with you on the State Farm Halftime Report. Indiana in control up by 28. Game doesn't look in doubt, Kendall. So what does Tom Crean focus on in the second half? Well, what he has to focus on is not turning the basketball over and also running good offense. If they do that, this game is over. And remember, we're going to look at some turnovers here, Kendall, because turning it over was what they did and what cost them against Loyola a few games ago. Yeah, they did turn the ball over. You see right there, Verdell Jones turned it over. Then again, here he does, goes again with the one-handed pass. you got to stick with the fundamentals. He did not make a basic play there. Then you got Jeremiah Rivers also turning the basketball over. You have to take care of the basketball. Indiana six turnovers in the first half against Bryant, but they all came in the first 12 minutes, really protected the ball much better in the second half of the first half. 
We will see you for the Big Ten Tonight finale, the postgame show coming up when everything is done in Bloomington. In the meantime, take a break and go back for the call. Craig Kashan and John Laskowski. I've driven a lot of different cars, but two things never change. No one demands more from their car than me, and nothing protects under the hood better than Peak. Peak Long Life Antifreeze is formulated with an advanced organic technology to protect any engine of any make, any model, any time. If you can drive it, Peak can protect it. And when I drive it, it better perform. Peak Long Life Antifreeze. When you peak, you win. BigTenNetwork.com, your home for hundreds of Big Ten video highlights. Sign up for text alerts and find out when your school will be featured on any Big Ten Network show. Interact with your favorite Big Ten Network personalities and shows on Twitter and Facebook. And download our podcasts to take the Big Ten Network with you wherever you go. The new BigTenNetwork.com. Log on now. Awesome. Someone's gonna do something. Good. He stole some little kids' pants. <laughs> yeah. Wait for me. Oh. What the fuck? The brand new four fan. The Joel connection. We hit Donovan. Is this guy clipping me in? Yeah, pretty pure, wasn't it? I mean, the hockey challenge took a poop in here. You guys are gonna argue this whole trip. Nobody knows what we're doing. That's pretty good on the drive-thru. Okay, that's good. Big Ten Network Basketball is brought to you in part by Peak. When you peak, you win. Back in Bloomington, it's Indiana and Bryant University at halftime. And how about this already, folks? Tomorrow night, conference play gets underway. Undefeated Purdue gets it all started as they open up on the road in Iowa City. Tuesday night basketball presented by Five Hour Energy at 7 Eastern on the Big Ten Network. Well, Indiana starts play against Michigan New Year's Eve day right here at Assembly Hall. And Laz, they relied heavily on their six freshmen. They're averaging about 42 points out of the team, 73 going in to play this week. I guess the question is, can they carry that load into the conference? Well, it has been a great impact for these freshmen. And the, the question is, the defense, though, in the Big Ten season really increases. You see Morris Creek there. That's third in the country of all freshmen. Watford's off to a good start. Elson's come on strong off the bench. And Holes, who you saw start today's ball game. But this defense that the Big Ten will play, and they'll see starting with Michigan on New Year's Eve, will be tough. I don't expect those numbers to stay that high. Well, we're looking forward to that matchup coming up Thursday. But now we have the second half of our game coming up. Bryant and Indiana. Big Ten Super Wednesdays, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. First, the high-octane Spartans look to show why they're one of the nation's best when they battle Texas Arlington. Then, it's an early conference showdown in Champaign as the gritty Wildcats square off with the rival Illini. And it all starts with the tip-off show. Big Ten Super Wednesdays, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Texas Arlington, Michigan State, Northwestern Illinois. Coverage starts at 6.30 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. Watch some great basketball in Indianapolis at the Big Ten Men's Basketball Tournament and boost your career all in the same weekend. The Big Ten Conference Career Expo will be held on Friday, March 12th and is only open to students and graduates of Big Ten Universities. Top companies will be looking to hire students for internships and full-time jobs for graduating students and alumni. Register now at BigTenCareerExpo.com and visit Indianapolis to cheer on your favorite team and make a fast break towards your future. Sunday nights. Get caught up on hoops with this week in Big Ten basketball presented by Barbasol. And a slam in impressive fashion. 
Dave Revson, Jim Jackson, and Dan Dockage recap the highlights from this week's amazing action. Everybody, and I mean everybody, got involved. And offer the first look at the marquee matchups coming up next on the schedule. This Week in Big Ten Basketball, presented by Barbasol, premieres this Sunday at 9 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. My country agrees to abandon the pursuit of nuclear weapons. We are close to signing one of the most important treaties in the history of this country. Someone is trying to make sure that this peace agreement does not happen. This man is a once-in-a-lifetime leader. What have you done? We're under attack. We are cold red. You put us on in danger. Get out! The two-night premiere of 24 begins next month on Fox. Hey, there you go. Hey, relatives of yours, Les. No, They're having no, a good time here at the Chevrolet Hall. They are having a good time. 45-17, <laughs> the Hoosiers lead Bryant University here at the break. Turnovers were an issue early for Indiana, but not in the final 10 and a half minutes, were they? Well, they did had six turnovers at the 10:36 mark, but ended up with seven at the end of the half. So that's 10 and a half minutes with just one turnover, and that's terrific. Tom Creed, very pleased with that stat right there. Christian Watford was active early. He leads all scores with 10 points as we take a look back at the action in the first 20 minutes. Well, we talked about the great uh, talent, individual ability that he has. And against a team like Bryant, who don't have any athletes really to compete with him, it was going to be a good game for Watford. He gets 10 points in the first half. How about this steal by Jeremiah Rivers? Anticipates very well. And then when that bounce pass came slowly, able to steal it. Derek Elson gets the big three-point shot from outside. Jordan Holes and Verdell Jones. So Indiana really putting together one of their best halves so far this year. Six threes in the first half for Indiana. And on those turnovers that they have forced, 10 turnovers, 17 points off of those. Tonight's game leaders presented by Auto Owners Insurance. Watford, the 10 points, also strong on the boards. Jones, nine points, also four assists. Michael Crony of Bryant with five points as Bryant continues to struggle offensively. Christian Watford and the Hoosiers ready for the second half when we come back. The podcast portal is here. We're spreading the word for you to check out the site. Music! Politics. The Human Drama. Podcasts can be unpredictable. So choose wisely. Get your IU on the go. Indiana University. Tuesday night basketball on the Big Ten Network. Conference play begins as the high-powered Boilermakers roll into Iowa City for a showdown with the upset-minded Hawkeyes. Tuesday night basketball presented by 5-Hour Energy, only on the Big Ten Network. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Big Ten Conference and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the expressed written consent of the Big Ten Conference. New Year's Day, the Big Ten Network kicks off the best pre- and post-game bowl coverage at 10 a.m. Eastern as Dave Howard and Coach get you ready for Northwestern Auburn and Penn State LSU. Then at 4 Eastern, Ohio State, Oregon, we break down the granddaddy of them all, and Rick Pizzo and Glenn Mason have the latest from Pasadena. And when it's over, the Big Ten Bowl postgame special wraps up the action. Big Ten Bowl coverage, New Year's Day, only on the Big Ten Network. Before the ball goes up, you have to watch the Auto Owners Insurance Tip-Off Show. Our experts offer their take on the day's big matchups and tell you the keys to success for your school. The Auto Owners Insurance Tip-Off Show, only on the Big Ten Network. College football fans, here's your chance to be a part of the BCS. Go online to get official BCS team merchandise and own a part of college football history. Order today at bcsfootball.org. This is the Big Ten Network. Sample Gates, Indiana University, as they host Bryant here tonight on the Big Ten Network, leading at the half 45-17. The 45 points matches 
a season high for Indiana. The 17 points for the opponents, a season low here in the 2009-2010 campaign. Ready to start play here in the second half. And Bryant will start with the basketball. A shot just a hair under 22% against Indiana's defense in that first half. And again, they had problems with the turnovers. Indiana forced 10 and were able to capitalize for 17 of their points. Near turnover there, another missed shot though. And here comes Indiana on the break to open things up in the second half. Ball loose, everybody active. Now the Bulldogs on the exchange, quickly down court and a foul coming up on Watford. Brony went in for the slam and got fouled as you take a look at the first half numbers. Six three-pointers for Indiana. And they out-rebounded Bryant as well and big time points in the paint, a plus 12 advantage for the Hoosiers. All the stats looking in Indiana's way. They opened a man-to-man -man defense, nice job. Uh, defense that first time down the floor, but again, like a turnover there at the, uh, the pass to Verdell to try to get the layup, and Bryant turned into a fast break. Crony makes the first of two free throw attempts. That's three points for him on the night. Again, a good storyline walking onto this program and has quickly become a starter based on uh, his energy. You see that every so often on the Division I level. Those are always good stories and a good finish on the fast break for Pritchard. Uh, good hustle by the big man. Pritchard getting down the floor quickly. And it's always good when the big man's rewarded for his hustle. That time he got a layup. Nice move down low and a good finish. That's too easy. Pass right down inside. Indiana not covering the basket. Drachev on the finish for Bryant. Balls in the corner. Three-pointer rims out. And that ball lost out of bounds. Indiana not as sharp offensively as they start this half. It's got to be a concern for Tom Green. Still haven't scored. Man. 20 into this half. Lazette, that's got to be a concern for a coach. Big lead at halftime is having that same energy to come out in that second half. And now a three-point shot and a foul. Chance for a four-point play. So Bryant scored six points already, a chance for seven in the first minute and a half. Let's watch Watford. It's, it's too far into the basket as the play starts. And then as he goes out to try to block the shot, he runs straight at the man. So your momentum's going to carry you right out and cause the foul. You, you have to angle so you're not going at the, at the shooter. So it's to get the hand up to uh, bother the shot. But then your momentum doesn't carry you into it. It carries you to the side of you avoid the foul. So Barry Latham completes the four-point play. 47 is going forward. Rockford with the three, and finally Indiana gets that field goal here in the second half. He's got a lot of ways to score, and that's what makes him a dangerous player. And he's seen a lot of scoring chances, and he shows a lot of different ways he can score tonight. Bryant tries to answer with the three. Arzic can't do it, but they'll get another opportunity as they chase down the ball. They always watch for that long rebound on a three-point shot. And players tend to go too far into the basket. Ball rebounds over their head. Ball loose. Who's got it down low? Look the hustle by Crony. Tonight's Making the Grade presented by GMC, and we spotlight Christian Watford, 13.6 of nine from the floor, seven rebounds already in this game for Watford. Had a, a good start, solid first half. Continues to put up the numbers here in the second half. Doing it inside and out. Speaking of inside and out, the feed down to Pritchard, and the foul coming up on Crony, count the hoop. Nice job by Verdell Jones. I mean, he could have taken this shot from 15 feet. He's very good at that shot, watching him off the screen. But he watches Pritchard keep going right on the basket. See how Pritchard lifted his hand up right there to say, hey, get this pass to me if you want. I got a layup. And that, you know, that layup turns into a three-point opportunity. Good communication between teammates as Pritchard's going to get an opportunity to complete the three-point play. Cannot, but his teammate, Watford comes up. 
with the rebound. Kick out, ball loose, still loose. Indiana's got it, plenty of time left on the shot clock for Hulls. Richard again down low and he's fouled. One more time by Cronies, he tries to disrupt his rhythm down low, but back to the free throw line. Good offense by Indiana. They're getting the ball in the lane. Look at Verdell driving under control. So as he gets triple teamed right there, he's got to know somebody's open. Pritchard's the guy's been hanging around the basket two times in a row now. Gotten that pass and gone up with it. So he's to make some of those free throws. Pritchard a 50% free throw shooter. Indiana just 66% as a team on the line this year. And Boston big against Loyola, Maryland. Missed several free throws at the end of that game. Now. Missed the last three here in this ball game. Ryan tries to answer with the three by Barry Latham. Can't get it to go. Holmes brings it up court for Indiana. He's got it in the corner. Three ball on the way. Bounces up high and in. Yeah, off that back iron straight up. Got that one to go. He's got nine. And that lead out to 55-24 now, biggest of the game. How fun was Holes to watch in, in high school last? He could really control the ball. His high school team undefeated state champs last year here in Indiana. Big school division of 4A. Scored well, directed the team. Oh, look at it athletically. Moved there by Pritchard, wow. I told you, hang around the basket, good things will happen. He might have been a little lucky, he doesn't practice that shot a lot, but he got that uh, left-hander to go in. Now the key here, Indiana seems to be back in charge. They need to keep that up, nice steal. Count it and a foul coming up as Jones completes it. And Indiana runs the break very well. And they'll take advantage of those bounces you get at home. They can do it outside of the arc and get the bounce as Holes gets his three. And how about Pritchard? Look at him lay out in the air and get the bounce off the window. We believe there is something to be said for delivering on promises and for restoring disruption as quickly as possible. Because it's not really about the stuff, it's about your family, your life, and theirs. Every policy from Auto Owners is sealed with a handshake from an independent agent that knows you and lives in your community. Welcome to a common sense approach to insurance. Whether it's home, auto, life, or business, the independent agent representing Auto Owners Insurance will keep you and everything you value safe, sound, and secure. College football fans, here's your chance to be a part of the BCS. Go online to get official BCS team merchandise and own a part of college football history. Order today at bcsfootball.org. See the country's top college wrestlers compete in one star-studded event, the 47th Annual Midlands Wrestling Tournament, presented by Cliff Keen Athletic. Sunday night at 7 Eastern, 6 Central in high depth, only on the Big Ten Network. The all-new BigTenNetwork.com. Your home for hundreds of Big Ten video highlights. Sign up for text alerts and find out when your school will be featured on any Big Ten Network show. Interact with your favorite Big Ten Network personalities and shows on Twitter and Facebook. And download our podcasts to take the Big Ten Network with you wherever you go. The new BigTenNetwork.com. Log on now. Thursday afternoon, say goodbye to 2009 with a colossal triple header of women's hoops on the Big Ten Network. The action starts with a rivalry matchup as Jory Davis and the Hoosiers battle Brittany Rayburn and the Boilermakers. Then, Veronica Hicks leads the Wolverines into a clash with Alyssa DeHaan and the Spartans. And Tyra Grant and the Lady Lions take on Jenna Smith and the Illini. A New Year's Eve triple header of hoops tips off at noon Eastern in high depth, only on the Big Ten Network. 
It's Super Wednesday on the Big Ten Network. Spartans host Texas Arlington, and then Northwestern and Illinois go head to head. And their Big Ten opener, Super Wednesday, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. That takes us right into our Big Ten Conference storylines. Number four, Purdue, unbeaten, right on course. Northwestern, though, ranked for the first time in 40 years. They cracked the AP poll this week at number 25. And Wisconsin, nobody gave them anything at the beginning of the season. Big wins already over nationally ranked Duke, Arizona, Maryland, and Marquette. Some good storylines as we get ready for Big Ten season. Northwestern's won eight games in a row now. Illinois lost their last two, so that's an interesting matchup tomorrow. Both teams on a couple streets. Kevin Koble also out of action for Northwestern with the injury. But yet they still keep on keeping on. It would be interesting to see what they can do in conference play. Another collision and bodies down on the court. This time it's Maurice out of Good sign there as he's holding his left leg. He's being attended to right away along that baseline on the floor. Certainly hope nothing serious there. Tim Garl, the Indiana trainer, Steve Allfeld, and Coach Crean. Let's watch the action. Spin dribble, and you can hear this foul. It comes right there's the slap. So the slap came on the on the left arm, but as he landed, you see him grab that left knee. Let's see if we can watch that knee. Couldn't quite see where he was. Uh, where it started, but he's still on the floor there. There's Maurice Creek, hometown. As he comes to uh, Bloomington, Indiana, 60 24, his team leads right now. Let's take one more look and see if that may not have happened right there as the uh, two legs collide. Hard to tell. See, he didn't get, well, he came down funny. Also, that was the right leg. You can really tell from there how, how the injury happened. You know, sometimes, Laz, it, it, it looks obvious, you can see it, and then sometimes it's not so obvious, and it can be serious too. So, obviously, we're gonna have to wait for a uh, word from Indiana. They're spending some time with them down there on the floor. I mean, as you concentrate, your mind says, to finish this play, I'm gonna get to the basket, get this layup and, and the pain may not come until you actually finish the play and that may have been what happened to Maurice. That's definitely his left leg and knee area that they're concentrating on for Maurice Creek. Oxen Hill, Maryland leads this team in steals, in scoring. One of the top freshmen not only in the Big Ten but the nation. You got it? Sam, get the uh, Tom Crean over there, making sure that uh, he understands the situation. And his uh, young player has a promising career here at Indiana. Gets all the attention that he needs. And, uh, got him, Sam. All right. They could be calling for uh, something to cart him off the court. And it doesn't look like Maurice Creek is going to go off even with some help from his teammates here. You don't want to cause further injury just by trying to see what happened. They're trying to get him to straighten the leg out. It looks like he finally does have it straightened out, sitting on a chair there. But uh, it's like they're waiting for the stretcher that's coming out of the back so they can uh, wheel him off the floor instead of have his players, his teammates carry him. Let's take one more look and uh, see again. It's the left leg, left knee area. That was the right knee tangled there. He jumps up, and there, see, it looked, might have been on the jump. As he was leaving that plane, that left foot and going, he didn't get any extension out of that jump. Let's watch the left foot now as he leaves the ground right here. And see how it, it kind of funny, he turned as he planted that foot, it turned, and it caused a, a undue pressure there at the wrong place. And then as he landed, he grabbed that left knee. Good hand from the top. Well, they brought the stretcher in, and of course, it's very difficult for us to speculate what the injury might be, but obviously serious enough here that they are taking their time and making sure that uh, Maurice Creek is as comfortable as he can be through this pain as he leaves the court. 
top scoring freshman in the Big Ten. At back-to-back -back games where he produced 60 points against Kentucky and North Carolina Central, having an outstanding rookie season. And unfortunately, that's not the site that they'll want to see anybody leave the court, but uh, Maurice Creek will get the medical attention that he needs now. So now the Hoosiers have to regroup, and they're up 60-24 right now. And you know these guys are thinking about his teammate at this point. Take a look at the numbers in the Big Ten. Now he's a freshman, but these are scoring leaders overall in the Big Ten, third right now in the conference. Manny Harris leading the pack. Harris having a great start for Michigan, so Indiana would be a big blow if he's not able to play early in this Big Ten season. Richard gets the free throw he's been wanting here in the second half, finally gets one to roll in. He's got 10 here in the ball game. Misses the second, Rivers taps it out of bounds. So Indiana active, trying to come up with that loose ball, but Bryant will get it back, down 61-24 in this game. And Pritchard just 50% on the year from the free throw line. One or two there. Two of seven in this ball game. Balls, baseline shot, in and out. So as Bryant winless coming into this game, 0 and 12, third year now in Division One. What are the Hoosiers gain by playing this team? Well, this is an Indiana team that is very young itself, and they need to gain confidence. They need to know that they can play and do the role the coaches ask them to do. It's easier to do that when you're playing a team that's its own 12 than it is playing the Michigan or Ohio State. Shot clock down to five. That shot did everything but fall in. The exchange, Hoosers have it back. Baseline shot won't go. Holes collects the loose change and a fresh clock for Jeremiah Rivers in Indiana. This one poked away. Bulldogs have it back. Spot up three is good. Sam LeClaire. Boy, things are noticeably quiet in here since Maurice Creek got carted out. Uh, two turnovers in a row by Indiana. Obviously, Tom Crean's concerned about Creek's injury, but he's also wanting this team to get out there and continue to play. And that has not happened so far since they were injured. Rivers pushes ahead. Oh. Alston can't finish. Pritchard fouled on the way up. And there's a cycle, you know, Craig, that you go through. As a high school player, you dominate your high school team, the teams you play against. That's why you get notes. That's why you get scholarships to Big Ten schools. And then you come in and your role changes as a Big Ten player. Uh, you're not going to score as many points because there's more guys just like you on the team. So you play a Bryant team and you play well and you, your stats look good. And your confidence comes back up and say, hey, I, I can play at this level. But then you play a Michigan who has better talent and, and more experience than a Bryant team. And that's going to be a tougher game. So you have to answer the bell when you're playing against tough teams because talent is, is, is very well distributed. There are a lot of good players out there. So it's the, uh, it's the mental side of the game that can still propel players and teams to, to make that upset bid, which is so fun to watch, especially in the tournament at the end of the year when, uh, when the better team doesn't always win. And that's why we love the game. Tom was also talking to us about his youthful squad and trying to decipher how much they have to use their instincts and how much they have to think. Well, you know, it's a, definitely a thinking game, and each coach has a different way he wants his team to think and operate. So you, you have to do enough practice in the game situation to understand, this is what my coach wants me to do in this situation. And you have to be able to recall that in a split second. Here's what I need to do. And that's what this team is working on. You get a four-point lead of being down 24 points, and you get a lead in the Loyola Maryland game, you need to figure out a way to hold that lead. And that was a leadership issue that, that this team has not uh, mastered yet. 
that Tom Creed needs to work on. So who do they turn to at this point? Who would be your natural go-to guy? Would it be a guy like Rivers right now? It would be. You know, he's a junior. He's been three years in college. He's only been one year here, a practice year last year. He did practice with the team. But now it's his first year playing and has made a wonderful start with the five assists a game. I think uh, Tom, Coach Crean is concerned about the turnover that he causes, uh, but the, the effort is there. It's just a matter of playing smart and controlling the game a little more. He disconnects at the free throw line, 64-26. That one off the window by Papalo, won't go. Rivers pushes ahead to Dumas, and he turns it over. Now Brian a chance to run. A foul coming up on Rivers as Crony does a nice job of slashing through the lane. So I think the running game really gives Brian a chance to score. That's the game they want to play. And Indiana runs up and misses. It gives Brian a chance to run up the court. That's right into Tim O'Shea's hands. But Indiana had success when they caused the half court game. They were able to score and they were able to play defense against Brian against their. Uh, half court offense. So uh, let's see if Indiana doesn't slow us down with some half court sets instead. Corny now with four points, looking for five if he can connect on the second free throw. Got it. 64-28. This is a uh, Indiana team that with a win tonight will go into Big Ten play with an overall record even up at six and six, trying to gain a little bit of steam. Three ball baseline will go for Dumas. Rebound on the ground. Nice look down low. Crony on the finish, but a good feed from LeClaire. Christian Lopper trying to get that steal at the other end. And he's not able to get back in time to stop the layup. And an offensive foul coming up this time on Devin Dumas. Here's Indiana's next five. Big Ten play starts on New Year's Eve day against Michigan. The road trip at Ohio State, back home against Illinois. On the road, Dan Arbor to play Michigan, and then January 17th, back home against Minnesota. They have a very alternate home road schedule this season. Almost still uh, 15 days after the first Michigan game again. So I think that first Michigan game, very important for Indiana. It's at home, and it's good competition. out of bounds, right up to us. And it's gonna go to Bryant. And this is a year two, you, you look at the schedule and you say, how do you pick any wins, Lars? How do you pick wins in the Big Ten? At times you can do that. Yep, sure did. I think they're gonna get a stop. Oh, there we go. Um, you know, each year is so interesting, Craig, and I think one of the most important stats to watch is, you know, the better teams in the league are gonna win at home. There's no way around it, they're gonna win at home. And the key then is how many road victories do you get? It happens every year. Good move there by Cronin to get the layup. So as you're a casual fan, you're watching Indiana and Michigan play, or Ohio State and Illinois, you don't really have a great interest in the game, always root for the, for the home team. You don't want to see the visiting team go in there and win because that's one more that they have that's very hard to mark up. Always cheer for the home team. Uh, all of a sudden, there's an advantage for the road team right. if they win. Timeout on the floor. Hoosiers lead it 64-32. We believe there is something to be said for delivering on promises and for restoring disruption as quickly as possible because it's not really about the stuff. It's about your family, your life, and theirs. Every policy from Auto Owners is sealed with a handshake from an independent agent that knows you and lives in your community. Welcome to a common sense approach to insurance. Whether it's home, auto, life, or business, the independent agent representing Auto Owners Insurance will keep you and everything you value safe, sound, and secure. This January, the Big Ten Network offers the most extensive look inside Big Ten basketball ever. Friday's Big Ten Hoops on Campus brings you everything happening on location in preparation for the big game. Sundays, go behind the scenes for one of the most competitive seasons ever on the journey, Big Ten Basketball 2010. And get a recap of all the hoops highlights on This Week in Big Ten Basketball presented by Barbasol. It all begins this January, only on the Big Ten Network. When you dream, do you dream in black and white? 
color, or do you dream in speed? Then get ready for the Speed Dream Ride. Watch marathon weekends of our best shows and enter to win a five-day star-studded, super-fueled, all-vehicle experience. A dream ride only speed can deliver. Hey, buddy. Watch your speed. The Speed Dream Ride. Enter at speeddreamride.com. Take me for a dream ride. Tom Crean's Indiana Hoosiers doubling up Bryant 64-32. Getting ready for the Big Ten opener against Michigan coming up this week. Last year, Tom Crean and Indiana built a big 20-point lead in this one. It looked like they might have that program establishing victory in the Tom Crean era, but to no avail, Michigan comes back big time and eventually wins it in overtime. Well, that's, that's why this game is important because Indiana knows they should have won that game last year with a really different team than they're going to show here on New Year's Eve. And uh, had a 20-point lead, and the players are returning. Remember that? And so I think this first game, very important for Indiana. 15 turnovers now for Indiana. One lost out of bounds. Hoosiers are going to get it back. Bryant also with 15 turnovers. Timeout on the floor. Oh, I think it's been a good day. Thank you. Ah, I think it's been a good day. Yes, I think it's been a good day. Don't be a sidekick. Eat like an alpha. Sunday nights. Get caught up on hoops with this week in Big Ten basketball presented by Barbasol. And a slam in impressive fashion. Dave Revson, Jim Jackson, and Dan Dockage recap the highlights from this week's amazing action. Everybody, and I mean everybody, got involved. And offer the first look at the marquee matchups coming up next on the schedule. This week in Big Ten basketball presented by Barbasol. Premieres this Sunday at 9 Eastern, only on the Big Ten Network. This January, the Big Ten Network offers the most extensive look inside Big Ten basketball ever. Friday's Big Ten Hoops on Campus brings you everything happening on location in preparation for the big game. Sundays, go behind the scenes for one of the most competitive seasons ever on the journey, Big Ten Basketball 2010. And get a recap of all the hoops highlights on This Week in Big Ten Basketball presented by Barbasol. It all begins this January only on the Big Ten Network. Tom Green's Hoosiers dominated by an outstanding freshman class, top 10 in the country, so that begs the question, who's got all the experience in the Big Ten as Big Ten play opens up this week? Well, these are the players returning with two plus years of experience, and almost two and a half. And it's interesting, Greg, to look at the teams, Michigan State, Ohio State, Wisconsin. Those are teams with very good reference in non-conference play. Northwestern, seven returners. They're having a one of year. Purdue with just six. It shows you how well those six players are playing. And I, you could almost take that graphic and show the the team is the most experienced when they're playing at home. Very difficult to beat them. You take a Michigan State with nine returning players, two years more experience playing at home. That's going to be a very difficult place to win. You go to the other end with Indiana and Iowa, one returning player with two years or more. That's where you can pick up a road win. And that's kind of how I think the better teams look at it. Let's see if we can see that again so you can get a study of this. And uh, I've never looked at it officially, but you can just tell by looking. The teams with the most experience are going to have good teams. So if you play at Ohio State or at Wisconsin, you know how hard it is to play there in Madison. Look at, at Northwestern. That's going to be a tough game, even though Kevin Koble is gone for the year. They're 10 and 1, ranked in the top 25. That's going to be a tough place to play this year. Minnesota just with four. Tubby does a great job up there, Tubby Smith, the coach. But comparatively to the other teams with two plus players, that should be an easier place to play at Minnesota. And I think an interesting point as well, you look at Purdue's six players with those 
experience, but those are the guys, the foundation that, that Tom Crean wants to establish here with this recruiting class, the guys that we're going to be talking about for three more years. And look what they did at Purdue in really a quick turnaround time. This is his fifth year here, but they struggled as well those first couple of years. Very good case. Matt Painter did a, a wonderful job with that Purdue team, but five years ago they struggled as he was bringing in his players, his system, and uh, they learned how to win, and now they're one of the top teams in the Big Ten. Ranked fourth nationally, the only unbeaten team left in the Big Ten, those Purdue Boilermakers. Kondrachev with the hoop in the paint for Bryant. Pritchard trying to answer on his end. Offensive rebound and a good putback down low. Didn't really need that dribble, but Bianco got away with it. Just want to take that ball, keep it high, and go right back up with it. Trapping, he gets away with, out of that jam. Jordan does, but Bryant can't convert on the other end. So the Hoosiers get the ball back just under 10 minutes to go in the ball game. Big lead for them, 68-34. Shot along the baseline is good for Christian Watford. He's got 15 in the ball game. Yeah, there's a drive to his right, pull up jumper. I mean, Christian Watford's shown a lot of ways he can score, and that's why it's tough to guard a guy like that. How much do you think, too, John, that uh, Tom Green is trying to take some kind of a model, too, as he, as he bases players something maybe like a Bo Ryan? He was talking to us during the shoot-around on how Bo Ryan can maybe benefit most by not having the, the single star power as Hulls hits another three. Nice job by Jordan Hulls getting that shot. Yeah, that was, uh, you know, as you play a Bo Ryan uh, Wisconsin team, uh, you know the style they're going to play. You're going to have the same type of players each year, even though there's graduation, and they win a lot of games, especially at the Cole Center. And Indiana wants to develop that. Tom Crean wants to develop his style, which is the guard oriented, up and down the floor game, where you uh, play lots of players, seven, eight, nine, ten players, to wear your opponent down and get that victory. And it's just fascinating to watch these coaches. They develop their style, and then it's the chess game. Each game, the first half, the second half. Which style is going to, how do we adjust at halftime to, to catch up, to stay ahead? And that's why I think the game is so interesting. Now Indiana finally comes away with their first line players and, and some of the subs come in. Some quality minutes yet to grab in this ball game for, uh, for both rosters. Both went 12 deep in the first half. Bianco. Yeah, nice job being in position. Out of control by Ponce. Just watch the drive. You can travel there even, but you've got to keep your head up. Watch what's in front of you. And you don't need to go like that. You're going to get the drive. Back out to Moore, thought about the three. He'll chew up a little bit of time, but gets it down low. Campo Bianco gets the finish. Nice play by Daniel Moore there. Got some experience last year, started several games for Indiana. Hasn't played as much this year, averaging about five minutes a game. But there he showed you what he can do. And the Bulldogs call a timeout. 75-34. In trouble on the trap. Now you can get free programming alerts on your mobile phone. Be the first to know when your favorite Indiana coaches and players will appear on the Big Ten Network. Just text IND to 20284 or log on to BigTenNetwork.com slash alerts. Message and data rates may apply for you Hoosier fans. Maurice Cruz.